What's up YouTubers and plant lovers, it's Justin and today I was going to show you how to transplant a dwarf banana tree. Now you've all probably heard the scientific name, there's a whole plethora of them out there. I believe what I have is Musa acuminata, uh, but there's also Musa uh, orient oriental ornata, Musa ornata, somewhere along that, bulbous, I don't know, there's a whole lot of them uh, for the scientific name. Uh, but these are the two I have. I was told that this one is a super dwarf and that this one is a dwarf. Uh, now, you can correct me in the comments if you want. I really don't care. I just know that I wanted some dwarf banana trees to kind of keep around the house, uh, to have a little bit more of a tropical feel around there. And look how beautiful these plants are. I know that this uh, little red striped foliage is going to go away as the plant matures, but it sure is pretty now. Uh, and this super dwarf, or this little smaller one, uh, is just really cool to look at. Uh, like I said, they uh, super dwarfs get to be about two to three feet tall, and then the dwarfs can get, I think, up uh, eight to ten feet tall, just depending on how they're planted. And uh, they are called banana trees, but they aren't trees in the sense of like an oak tree or a maple or an apple tree. Uh, these stems are compacted leaves that are super compacted really tight, uh, and then leaves kind of come off uh, at the top in the center where they kind of just grow out and bush out just like a, any other plant. But they do have the tubers so that they will kind of spread out in the sense of like a tulip or a daffodil, kind of like a bulb. Uh, so they will kind of come up and get wider each year and get taller. Now these are not code hardy. I live in Kentucky um, and we do have a strain of code hardy banana trees that are perennials and come back year after year. But these guys are not. Uh, they do not like it to be lower than about 50 degrees. I probably wouldn't go about maybe lower than 55, 60, somewhere around there. Uh, they are tropical plants, so they do not like cold weather at all, and they will not really survive a frost. Uh, so do not forget these guys outside unless you do have the cold hardy ones. Uh, and even still, uh, we just had a really bad cold spell a couple weeks ago, and uh, my cold hardies that were starting to come up uh, started to die back. So uh, you may have to cover them up. Uh, but a little word of advice, if you do cover them up, make sure you get up at the butt crack of dawn when the sun is coming up. Because if you leave the cover on them for too long, they will kind of wilt and uh, die and die back if they are covered too long. Um, so just keep that in mind because as soon as the sunlight comes up, you need to go out there and kind of remove it because it will get really humid and really hot and kill back any new growth that you were trying to prevent from dying from the frost. So just keep that in mind too because I learned that the hard way this year. <laughs> All right, so now what I'm going to do is transplant these guys, and they really like really porous, quick-draining soil. Um, so they'd like to have a lot of fertilizer, especially if you're wanting your tree to pack on a lot of mass and to flower and to produce bananas. You are going to need to feed your trees a lot in order for them to actually start producing anything at all. Uh, but if you're just kind of more into for the foliage like I am, uh, I really don't care if they produce bananas. I will kind of feed them some, but not as much as if I were going to expect them to produce bananas. Got my little trash can down here. And what I'm going to do with is uh, set my super dwarf and focus on my dwarf variety. Now, all I need to do is start squeezing the soil in the cup to kind of break it up and loosen it up a little bit. Just by hand. And then squeeze around the base. And if you see any roots kind of come out the bottom, uh, don't worry, you can break those off. Everything will be fine. And then you'll have all this compacted root mass and substrate around here. And as you can tell, it's really sandy uh, soil. Uh, so make sure that when you get new soil that you're going to get something that's formulated for cacti, succulents, or citrus. Uh, because that's usually designed to uh, drain really easily and not hold on to moisture for too long. So what I'm going to do is uh, start by breaking up the root ball. I lost my root rake too. I don't have my root hook or my root rake, which would make easy work of this instead of doing it by hand. So alas, I'm forced to do it with my phalanges. 
But in doing so, be very careful. Take your time. You do not want to go very hard and very fast uh, because you will snap off roots. And I mean, that's not a bad thing, uh, but unless you really want to, I wouldn't try to break off any roots uh, because you, then you'll just have to kind of go in there and cut them out and uh, make sure that they don't really die down in the soil and rot and create any kind of other problems. So I'm just kind of going slowly by hand. Loosening up the root ball a little bit because I will go in there and I will trim some of these bigger roots back so that uh, he'll have plenty of room in his new home. I've got the root mass, the root ball, down to about a quarter of where it was. Maybe a little bit more. But that should be fine. Sit that down right there. And I am going to do what I should have done at the start of this and sanitize my pruning shears. <clears throat> always, always, always sanitize everything. You don't know where they've been sitting, who's picked them up, who's touched what, and who's had what. And with our current situation, I think we've learned that it's better to err on the side of caution instead of being sorry later on. Take the time, sanitize your pruning shears. You can either do it with hot soap and water or some rubbing alcohol and a cotton swab like I'm doing, and sanitize your pruning shears from plant to plant. Now, if you're just staying with one plant, you're good. Just sanitize it once before and then after so you don't have to do it the next time. But now that I've got the root mass to where I want it, I will start trimming back some of these bigger, fleshier roots down here. And as a general rule of thumb, you can remove up to about three quarters of a plant's root mass without causing harm to your plant. So don't go crazy with it, but trim it back some. Trim off that ugly dead leaf there. Throw that one away. And let's move on to the hard part. Oh, okay. Now I said this uh, dwarf variety is gonna get about eight to 10 feet tall. So I've got him a pretty good size pot. It is a sealed ceramic pot. Uh, so that'll help during the winter time. Uh, if I set him out in the garage, um, it'll help keep the roots warm. Uh, but like I said, it really cannot go below 50 degrees or else you're going to have problems with yours. My poor lazy Susan's like, oh my God. Now, I've got the soil. You should see all the bags of the soil that I have over here. And not to mention the bags of perlite. Manipulite, Thomas, and all that. Now, it should be known that banana trees love water. They say that some plants, depending on the variety, need about an inch of water per week. So with all that water, you want a drainage pot that has adequate drainage in it. This one's got at least three drainage holes in it. And they're rather big, so it uh, drains water really quickly. And then I've got this stuff that also drains really quickly. And then I'm going to be mixing in some pearl white too for added drainage help. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever used this stuff. Uh, this organic horticultural pearl white, it's really dusty. So when you apply it, use your ceiling fan or a box fan and open the window. You can see all the dust kind of coming out now. And cover your mouth. And I'm just going to dump all that down in there. Yeah, you don't want all that going in your lungs. And then I will add more substrate on top. And I will take my hands and just kind of mix it all down around there. I said, make sure your fan's on. Make sure as you see the plumes come up, you're not gonna breathe all that in. All right, now I've got the substrate about to here. And I want the plant to sit up a little bit higher, so I'm gonna put in 
uh, some Miracle Grow raised gardening bed just for added nutrients. Soil, not a lot, just kind of some in around where the roots are going to be so that it can feed off of it for a little bit because they are heavy feeders. All right, now I've taken about six handfuls of that raised bed organic compost substrate and I'm mixing in the perlite with it too. I'm not adding any more, I'm just mixing what I have already in there around so that this won't hold a whole bunch of water. I mean, it'll hold some. But like I said, you don't want to overdo it with the organic compost uh, because they are heavy feeders, but it does hold a lot more water than the stuff designed for the cacti and everything. So that's about where I want him to sit. So now I will start adding in more substrate. Now you don't really want the substrate to like come up to the leaves, but a little bit won't kill it. So I'm trying to compact it just a little bit to kind of rid the soil of any excess air bubbles that might be in there and kind of mess the roots up. And then I'm going to add in just a little bit more of some pearls. And now that I've packed all that down, I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more in here. I had this old friend Martha that I used to work with when I worked at Lowe's in the greenhouse and she would always talk plants with me. I haven't talked to her in a while, I really miss her. But uh, she would always, every year in the Cone Hardy Bananas would come out, she would grab a plant for me, put one or two back so I could grab some because she knew how much I enjoyed them. a little bit of perlite. Mix it in there again. So I will use some distilled water. As you know, Kentucky water is very hard water. And next, it is time for my super dwarf. <coughs> Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I always sanitize the pots out too before I use them. I do that with hot soapy water and a scrub brush. Now, it is very funny. A long time ago, you used to not be able to get bananas anywhere. Only just the people that grew them had them and sold them. Uh, but now, they've got so many cultivars uh, that the average homeowner can grow a couple of them and even ones that are in apartments can be grown in containers like the super dwarfs that only get to be about two to three feet tall so that's why I think these guys are really interesting now his root mass is a little bit more dry than the other one so I'll have to make sure when I get done with him I'll water him really well now, I really should say that with these uh, dwarf varieties, they do like full sun to partial shade. Uh, if you're wanting them to flower, they need to have about 10 to 12 hours of sunlight a day and pretty direct sunlight. And if you're wanting them to fruit or flower, it's about 12 hours. Um, but in order to keep them happy and thriving, they need about 8 hours of direct sunlight a day. So, of course, it's been cold here in Kentucky. So I can't set them outside. I can set them out during the day, uh, but bring them in at night because it's been so cold out here. Uh, I've had to use my LEDs to help them out a little bit, which my super dwarf appears to be doing just fine. My dwarf looks like he's a little saggy, like he might need some more water. But I gave him a good amount and new substrate. So I think they are fine. But what I was also going to say is uh, they need about 8 hours of direct sunlight a day. Uh, but I would give them about 6 hours of direct sunlight if you're wanting to just focus on the foliage. 
uh, because giving it some partial shade will kind of leave the leaves a deeper, darker, richer green. Uh, if you give them 10 to 12 hours of sunlight a day to flower and produce fruit, uh, their leaves will fade a little bit and kind of turn a little yellowish green. Not indicative of anything wrong, but uh, the bright sunlight will kind of bleach the leaves out just a little bit. So if uh, you do have it in a container and you have it on your patio, I would give it around six hours and then give it a little hour, a couple hours of shade. Uh, that way you'll just get the foliage that you desire and it'll look really nice. And as I was saying also, there are a lot of ailments with these banana plants. Uh, not just pests, but fungal and infections and everything else that's out there. There's even a banana wilt that's been plaguing Africa. Uh, so there are a lot that can really kind of plague your banana trees. So you always want to sanitize your pruning shears, any of your gardening tools, your new pots. Uh, if you go to replant the following year, I would clean the same pot out with a bleach solution. That's uh, nine parts water to one part bleach uh, to soak your tools in and to soak your container in and use completely pasteurized soil. Now, any miracle Grow Fox Farm or anything like that is going to already do that for you, but they've been sitting on the shelves for a while, um, so you never know what could happen. You could end up <clears throat> wanting to pasteurize your own soil, and that's a very healthy approach to keeping healthy trees and healthy plants. And what you can do is take some heavy aluminum foil and place the soil that you're wanting to use in that foil and kind of bag it up and put it in the uh, hot box or your uh, stove. And you want it to reach 180 degrees for 30 minutes. So you may need to purchase a meat thermometer to stick down in the uh, aluminum foil. And once it hits 180 degrees, you want to keep that for about 30 minutes and it'll uh, sanitize your soil also so uh, then you can take it out let it cool for a while and store it in like a ziploc container or bag uh, and that'll keep it safe and ready to use because like I said these guys are very 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 susceptible to infestation rot uh, fungus and just all kinds of other problems alright now as you can tell with this one I've had a little bit more trouble kind of separating the root mass uh, it was really dry compacted in there really bad root bound so it's taking a little bit longer. Uh, if you do think that yours might be kind of a problem like mine was, I would water it the, about 24 hours before so you're not kind of going through mud. Uh, but the water will help you in order to uh, kind of separate it out. But as I always recommend using a root rake or a root hook and that will make easy work of getting in there and detangling these roots instead of having to do it by hand like I'm doing. As I mentioned in the past, these plants like a lot of water. Uh, now, as summer approaches, as the heat index goes up, the water intake levels need to go up too. Uh, and as I said earlier, they need about a inch of water per week per plant. Now that's not a ton, but that is a good amount uh, for each banana plant. So don't be skimping on the water because these guys need a lot, especially if you want them to produce the flowers and fruit. But everyone's like, ah, my banana tree has bananas. All right, so the root ball is about where I want it to be. Just kind of going through there gently, moving dirt around, scooting roots to the side, and then kind of just following them down to ding tangle on them. All right, the last thing I want to go over is the soil pH and fertilizer. They do like their substrate to be slightly acidic. So about 5.5 on up to 7.0 is ideal to slightly acidic to, uh, to neutral. Uh, so that's very important. Otherwise, the bananas will not be able to absorb the nutrients that they need uh, if the soil pH is not right. You can have it sent off to your county extension cooperative uh, and they can test it for you. Or you can buy stuff at Lowe's or Walmart or Home Depot in the garden center. Or just take it to any reputable garden center that you know, local, and they should be able to help you test your soil to see uh, what your pH is and what elements are in there as well. Uh, now, when it comes to fertilizer, they need all the same basic requirements, nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium, just like any other plant. Uh, where it gets a little bit different 
is that uh, they need some macro and micro nutrients in there as well that really kind of helps them grow uh, and helps them through all their various stages of life. So uh, I think that you could get any kind of all well-balanced fertilizer uh, to kind of help and give it a general all well-around feeding. Uh, but I know that some of the macronutrients like calcium, magnesium, and sulfur are critical macronutrients as well. Um, and then the micronutrients like iron, manganese, zinc, and copper are also needed to be in there too. Um, I know a lot of people will say that uh, with their dwarf bananas, they fertilize every time they water, and that's fine. You can do that, but you have to remember to dilute that by about three quarters because if you're giving them the full dose every time, you're going to burn your plant out and you're going to overfeed and kill your plant. So if you choose to fertilize them every time you water, uh, that's fine, but dilute, dilute, dilute it down because you will kill your plant. Um, now I feed mine around about once a month. Uh, it really just depends on what stage of the growing cycle we're at. Uh, but starting out a nutrient, uh, a fertilizer that's high in nitrogen will generally be okay for your plant in the first year. Uh, and then once it starts flowering, uh, a nutrient or a fertilizer that's high in potassium or phosphorus uh, are also better. So you could start out with a high nitrogen, uh, then after it flowers go to a high phosphorus or a high uh, potassium fertilizer. Um, and as long as you've got those macro elements in there, the calcium, the magnesium, and the sulfur, and then you have the micro ones, the zinc, uh, the copper, the manganese, and the iron are very important too. So while you're looking for that, make sure you keep a lookout for uh, nutrients uh, that are in there also, because some of them just have the NPK and uh, various assortments of others. Uh, but if you cover those, your uh, banana trees will stay relatively healthy. Now the last thing I want to do is go ahead and water this guy and he'll be good to go. Like I said, you really want to kind of keep an eye out on the water and the light because all that's very important with your banana trees and your feedings and the humidity. So as long as you're covering all those bases, you will have a really good looking banana tree, uh, especially one that you could probably bring inside and keep alive in your house uh, during the colder months too. As I said, these guys are not code hardy, so you will have to bring them indoors. Uh, so when you're picking your pot, make sure you, you consider that. You might want a nice little plastic one that isn't too, too heavy, uh, but if it gets really windy or storms, uh, your pot might blow over it's not that big a deal. If it does, just go out there and pick it back up. Plants are hardy plants for that reason. Uh, but if you do have a thick kind of a stone pot like I do, it may break. Uh, so just kind of be mindful of that. Well, guys, that's really all I know about these uh, plants. Uh, leave me a comment and let me know what some of your favorite uh, varieties. I like the super dwarfs and the dwarfs. Uh, but I also do have the code varieties out around my house. Uh, and let me know if you've ever had any kind of success or failures with these guys. And while you're at it, hit the subscribe button or the bell next to it. That way you'll know any time that I've uploaded a new video. You guys take it easy, have a good one, and don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube. Once again, I'd like to give a shout out to my friends over on Patreon. Gabriel donated this month. If you're interested in donating to my Patreon, please check the link below in the description box.